Alright guys, in this video we're going to begin our exploration of what we refer to as arithmetic sequences. And so that is to say we've looked at some sequences, you know, these, there are these ordered lists of numbers that are often defined by a rule, we can graph them, uh, and, and we see that really they're just functions whose domains are the set of counting numbers here. Well, certain sequences are very, very well behaved, and arithmetic sequences happen to be one of those types of sequence. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at sequences that basically have what we refer to as a linear progression. That is to say, if we were to graph it, it would be a straight line uh, progression. So I want you to consider these sequences with me here. I've given the first, let's see, one, two, three, four, five terms of each of these sequences. <clears throat> what I want to do is just basically describe the pattern, you know, see if we can use that pattern to determine the value of the sixth term in each of these sequences, and then see if we can come up with what each of these sequences, even though they're different, has in common with the other one. So this very first one here, I notice it goes negative 2 to 1 to 4 to 7 to 10. Uh, it looks pretty consistent in terms of its growth to me. Uh, but from term to term, the thing that I want to have you write in here is that we notice that it's increasing by 3 from term to term. The fact that it's changing by 3 on our output for every 1 on our input here kind of gives us this linear sense, this, this idea of changes by 3 for every 1 of our position terms. So Looking at something like this, we could say, well, you know, in terms of describe the pattern, uh, it, it is increasing constantly by plus 3. And so in this case here, we're going to predict the next term here. If we were to add another 3, that would just mean that our, our sixth term here, our A6, would be 13 in value here. So um, looking at this next sequence here, it looks like it's going downhill, and so going down by 10 every time. If we had to describe this in words or just uh, symbolically here, we would say that it's going down by 10 every time here. And in terms of what I would predict to be my next term value then, if it continues to go by down, down by 10, excuse me, I could predict it to be 50. And then this last sequence here, you notice that we have fractions from term to term here, but it's increasing every time, and it looks like that it's increasing by 1 7th. So plus 1 7th plus one seventh, plus one seventh, and plus one seventh. So we see that these uh, sequences that are changing by a constant amount every time here, that would make this seven sevenths, or really if we could put a one. Um, we see that these sequences are sequences that are either adding or subtracting uh, from term to term to get to the next consecutive term value there. But they're always adding or subtracting a, a, a set amount each time. So in terms of what they have in common here, I suppose what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a little note that uh, each of these sequences are changing by a constant amount from term to term. And that's what we'll want to basically acknowledge here. When we see this type of pattern occurring, these are the kind of sequences that we're going to refer to as being arithmetic sequences. And so you can see that they're easy to spot. How can we define them a little bit more technically then? Let's go ahead and take a look at this slide here, a set of slides here. So note that it says arithmetic sequences in terms of vocabulary here. Arithmetic sequences uh, are these sequences uh, where they have a common difference. So it says in an arithmetic sequence, the difference between consecutive terms is constant. So Underlining difference here, if it'll let me uh, write on it. Uh, difference, this implies subtraction. Okay, So when we talk about a common difference, we're talking about what it is changing by from term to term here. It's just that when we talk about sequences like these down here that are changing by a common difference, if I were to ask you what it changes by, say for instance from negative 5 to negative 3, you say it added 2. But how could I find this? What we can do is we can always grab a term and subtract off the term right before it. As I say, like negative 3 minus negative 5 here. That would give me a positive 2. And that will represent the change. So this common difference that exists here um, is what we're going to talk about next. We say that the common difference, which we give this uh, lowercase letter d for, the common difference is um, the, the space between terms. So it says the constant difference between consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence is called the common difference and is denoted by the, the lowercase letter d. So you're going to notice that all of my formulas tend to be today a little bit off just because I did some copying and pasting into uh, PowerPoint. And so this notation is not going to be right here. We need to rewrite this. But essentially we're going to write that our common difference is equal to a sub n minus a sub n minus 1. And in words what this means is what we can do is we can grab any term in the nth position here and subtract off the term that's right before it in the n minus 1th position. So that is to say if I wanted my common difference down here on this first one, I suppose even if I wanted to decide if any of these are arithmetic, 
we would have to check to see that a common difference indeed exists. So for instance, down here, I could say that my D is equal to negative three minus the negative five right before it, which is negative three plus a positive five, which is two. But you'll notice that if I were to grab these two consecutive terms, maybe my negative one and one, and I say, let's take one and subtract off the term right before it, I get one plus a positive one, which comes out to be two. And even if I grabbed uh, the, the last term here, which is the fifth term, and I say three minus the term right before it, I keep getting two. The fact is, if I get two for all of these differences between term to term, then this must be arithmetic. So we're going to say that this first one here, which we're trying to decide down here whether or not these are arithmetic, uh, we're gonna say that this first one is arithmetic, and specifically what we're gonna write is that our common difference is plus two. That is to say it's going up by two every time. Now, when you look at letter B, we say, is this arithmetic? You might be uh, aware enough to just see that it's going down by 1.5 every time, but we actually have to show our work here. So we're going to say to find a common difference, we'll grab 8.5 and subtract off the 10 before it. That means from term to term there, it went down by 1.5 units. Now how about from 7 uh, minus 8.5 here? So from 7 up to 8.5, 7 minus 8.5 gives us a negative 1.5. That's the same. You can see that if I did 5.5 minus 7, I'd get negative 1.5. And if I did 4 minus 5.5 here, I'd get negative 1.5. So uh, worth noting that this would be arithmetic, okay, because it has a common difference, and that its common difference here in this case is going down by 1.5 units every time. So now when we look at C here, we say, well, do we have a common difference? 2 minus 1 would be 1, which means from here to here it increases by 1. But when we do this next difference here, 4 minus 2, 4 minus 2, you instantly observe that it goes up by 2. And you know you can even just looking at this here, up by four and up by eight, we can see that because these differences or distances between these numbers are not the same, this is not arithmetic. So we're gonna make a note here, not arithmetic. And we're gonna say that there's no common difference, D, okay? So go ahead and observe this last uh, sequence here. We've got two thirds, one third, four thirds, five thirds, two, and actually, let's go back and read this again, two-thirds to one to four-thirds to five-thirds to two. As a matter of fact, if you were to take this one here and rewrite it as three-thirds, it'd be a little bit easier to see that what's actually happening here is that this sequence is going up by a third every time. Now, in order to kind of better analyze this, I suppose that we could just go ahead and find our common differences. And you would see that if we would have done one minus two-thirds, we would have need a common, needed a common denominator of three. So, you know, three thirds minus two thirds equals one third. That just means that from term to term here, it increases by one third. And then from one to four thirds there, we could just check this four thirds minus one, which is B one over one, which is four thirds minus three thirds when we scale this fraction here by three. Suppose we get one third again, and of course we're gonna get one third on all of these. And so this is going to be an arithmetic sequence and our d value is going to be a positive one-third. So you can see that arithmetic sequences are just simply well-behaved sequences where we have a common difference from term to term. As we look at these next couple of videos, we're going to look at how we can write a rule for arithmetic sequences fairly easily compared to writing rules in the past where it was a little bit more of a critical thinking process. Cheers.